What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at the flood gauge for TTK Bootstrap and Kinter. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at the flood gauge for TTK Bootstrap. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And super quick announcement, there are still three days left where you get $100 off tkinter.com membership. And that comes with a brand new course there where I create this chat GPT bot where you can type questions, submit them to chat GTP, get answers here. Uh, we can clear the response. We've got an API key section. Very cool. To take advantage of that, just head over to tkinter.com, scroll down, and membership is usually $149. But if you come down here and click have coupon code for the next three days and type in chat GPT, click apply, and boom, that'll knock $100 off membership. So it pays just $49 and you get membership. You get all my Kinter courses. You see here's the new chat GPT course right here. 23, 24 videos, something like that. Really cool, a lot of fun. Plus you get the hundreds of other videos that also come with membership, uh, the book, the uh, code, the access to the Facebook group, all the things. So check that out if you're interested. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at this flood gauge. Very cool, we can start it, we can stop it, we can increment it by a few. When we do, we can get the correct position it's at, 67. And this is something new and different that just comes with TTK Bootstrap. Obviously there's no flood gauge in regular Kinter. So this is kind of exciting and really fun. So we're gonna dive into that in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other TTK bootstrap videos in the series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file here. I'm just calling it flood.py. It's our basic TTK bootstrap starter code that we always have. We imported TTK bootstrap as TB. You gotta pip install that if you haven't already. We've set the window theme to superhero and pretty much everything else is normal Kinter. So let's come down here and create a flood gauge. I'm just gonna call this my gauge, call it anything you want. And that's gonna be a TB dot flood gauge. And it's TB dot because we've imported TTK bootstrap as TB up here. So TB goes there. And we wanna put this in root and we wanna give it a boot style. And you're gonna use any of your bootstrap color styles. I'm gonna pick success, that's green I believe. You could pick primary, secondary, danger, info, a light, dark, all the regular colors that you have to choose from. Now we can also set the font for this. So I'm gonna make the font a little bigger just so it's easier for us to see. I'm gonna set that as Helvetica and give it like a size 18. Now here's where it gets a little bit different. So right off the bat, I wanna give this a mask of POS, short for position, right? Now we can keep track of the exact position of our flood gauge by passing in, just like if it was an F string, you know, you kind of do an F string like that. It's not an F string, but we put then a percentage sign after it. This will automatically update with the current position as it moves up and down, right? So you don't have to do that, but if you want it to sort of keep track of what it's doing on the flood gauge itself, that's very, very useful. So we could do all kinds of different things. We can set the uh, maximum, for instance. So, you know, you might want this to be 100 or you might want it to be 50 or, you know, whatever you want. I'm just going to put it at 80 for now, just for fun. We'll play around with this. And then you could also set the orient. And by default, this is gonna be horizontal. There you go. So if you're gonna do horizontal, which is left to right, you don't have to put your orient in there. You could just leave that out. But if you wanna do it up and down, then it would be vertical. And we'll play around with this and change it up in a bit. So finally, we can set the value that we wanna start on. So you might wanna start it at zero. Obviously, you could just leave this one off if that's the case. Uh, but if you wanna start it at a certain level, you could put it right there. So now let's minus score gauge dot pack this guy. And let's give this a pad Y of like 50. There you go. So let's go ahead and save this, head back over to our code and run this guy. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run Python flood.py. And when we do, we see POS position of 10%. It's sort of 10% up and there we go. So, okay, that's cool. Now this is kind of small. We can make it a lot bigger if we want. And we do that by playing with the pack value. So we could go fill equals X, that's X left and right. I suppose we should capitalize it, but I'm not sure that matters. So, okay, let's save this and run it. And now you're gonna see this is massively all the way, it fills all the way left to right. So, okay, that's, you know, kind of not great. So we can also give this a pad X of like, I don't know, 20 to give it padding on each side, make it a little bit nicer to look at, I suppose. Okay, so there we go. So I kind of like that, we'll just leave it like that. So. All right, now let's create a button that we could start it and stop it and add some incrementation. And also I'm gonna change this from 10% back down to zero because I don't know, I don't really need to start it at 10%. <laughs> so there you go. 
So let's create a start underscore button. And that's going to be a TB dot button. We want to put it in a root. We want the text to say start. And let's give this a boot style of like danger and outline. So it'd be like red outlined. And let's give this a command of starter. And we haven't created that yet, but we will in a second. So let's start underscore button dot pack and give this a pad Y of like 20 to push down the screen a little bit. Now I'm just going to copy this a couple of times. And this one we'll call a stop button. And we'll have the text say stop. And we'll give it a command of stopper. <laughs> I don't know. And then this one will be, uh, we'll call this ink for increment INC. And this will be increment. And here, let's call this inker. <laughs> I don't know. Or incrementer. There we go. So now we want to create these three functions starter, stopper, and incrementer. So let's come up here and let's define starter. And we want to pass. And let's define stopper. And we want to pass. And let's define incrementer. And we want to pass. So, okay, to start, it's very easy. So let's start the gauge. We just call my underscore gauge dot start. And that's it. Now to stop it, same thing, we call my underscore gauge dot stop. Very complicated. And to increment it, we just call my underscore gauge dot step. And then we say, what steps do we want? So I want it to go every 10, right? So when we click the button, it bops up 10 and then it stops. So we can go ahead and save this and let's run this. And it should work out okay. Let's see what we got. So here we have start, stop, and increment. So let's start. And you can see it just one at a time. It goes like that. We could stop it by stopping. And now we can increment. So 52, 62, 72. And then once it gets to the top, it just starts on over again, right? So that's kind of cool. And there we go. Now, one thing I'll mention is how it comes to the end and then it starts over at zero. That's because of the mode. So you can change that if you want when you define the flood gauge. So here we can set the mode to, and the default is determinate, right? That means keep on going basically, but we can change it to indeterminate if we want. If we save this and run it, you'll see this sort of uh, ping pongs back and forth from start to finish. So. We go start and you can see one, it looks different. The gauge itself is not full, but when it hits the end, boom, it bops back down and it keeps going and it keeps counting. So we're at now 180, 100, 200, 240, and it's going up to 80, which is what we set our value, our max value at. So this is kind of weird. You may want that for some reason. Same thing works with increment. It will bop back and forth as you increment it. So. Just sort of keep that in mind. I'm going to change it back to determinant because indeterminate is just, you know, freaking me out. So <laughs> let's go down here and let's create a label now. So my label, this is going to be a TB dot label. We want to put it in root and we want the text to say, I don't know, position, something like that. And now let's my underscore label dot pack. Give this a pad Y of 20, push it down the screen a little bit. So with this label, we want to update it every time we hit the increment button to show us exactly what position we have. And you can use this to get the position of anything, even when it's in starting and stopping. But we're just going to do the increment one because that's easiest. So we can come up here and go my underscore label dot config and set the text equal to, and I'm, and I'm going to create an F string and go position and then pass in. This is going to be my underscore gauge dot variable dot get. So that will get the current position. That's that variable. And this gets created automatically with the with the widget. And it keeps track of that automatically. So you can at any time see where your position is in your flood gauge by calling the name of your gauge dot variable and then dot get sort of like an entry box dot get it. Right. So let's come back over here. Try this guy again. We're at position zero. Let's increment at one and it says boom 10 20 30 40 50 60 70. And when it hits 80, boom, it starts over at zero. And again, we can start and stop here. And now it's 34%. If we click it again, boom, 44%. So 
any position it currently is at, it will keep track of that. So very cool and very interesting. Now, just to make sure here, we can come back over here and make sure that this is a number. It's supposed to be a floating point number, uh, but let's see if we can add 10 to it just to make sure. So if we increment it, boom, now it goes to 20 because it's 10 plus 10, right? So 30, 40, and we're good to go. So it's definitely a number. You could do numbery things with it. You don't have to convert it from a string like sometimes you have to do with things. And that's very cool. So I'm gonna get rid of that. So that's the flood gauge. Pretty cool, fun little widget. And I'm really happy to see these little extra things popping up in, in TTK Bootstrap and it makes it a lot of fun to use and all kinds of cool things you could do with this. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to grab your totally free PDF version of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. I think it's awesome. Over 150 pages with all the Kinter widgets and the TTK widget attributes as well. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address, and I'll shoot a free PDF copy over to you. And while you're there, think about getting membership in tkinter.com for the next three days. You can use that coupon code ChatGPT to get $100 off membership. Check out the new ChatGPT course. It's a pretty good time. So my name is John Elder from tkinter.com. I'll see you in the next video.